In these choice exercises, I am asking the dog to choose a toy and helping them towards the correct choice of the tug if needed. These games are to teach the dog that a ball is a boring object, not a fun toy. Choosing the tug means playtime with me and lots of fun. These games are hard work for the handler and you must persevere with the training as it really does pay off. As you can see, Costa does like to chase, so I am using this to my advantage and having him chase me in the tug when he has the ball. If you are struggling to keep the dog's attention on the tug and they keep going back for the ball, as soon as it is dropped, pick it up and then aim for a big game of tug. I have included the full training of this exercise so you can see the true effort that needs to be put in to accomplish a tug drive. Don't be afraid to run around, be silly and even make growling noises if that helps your dog. Tug games are supposed to be loud, rough and lots of fun, so give your dog a real good game and don't forget to let them win every so often too. Having your dog run to a tug helps to create a safer and easier in-ring environment. You know exactly where your dog is, you're not having to chase them round to catch them, should there be a problem dog you were in a better position to remove yours from danger and simply for a resend you can remove the tug, line the dog up and send as you don't need to worry about swapping for the correct ball or your dog chasing a loose ball in the run back area and potentially having a collision or incident with an alternate dog. Now we see Summit starting on the next stage where I am playing with the ball and trying to distract her. The aim is for her to keep hold of the tug and ignore the ball. She isn't very good at ignoring it but always swaps for the tug quickly so we are progressing nicely.
finally, we see Ziva, who is 100% focused on the tug. I am currently doing everything I can to distract her, but she won't let go until the leave command is given. To determine which hole the ball should be in, you must work out which way your dog naturally turns. To do this, hold your dog and throw a ball or other toy. Wait for it to come to a standstill and then release your dog. As your dog picks up the toy, call them to you to help encourage them to turn back. Do this three to five times. Here I am doing this exercise with Costa. As you can see, each time he turns to the left to come back. This means he will have the ball in the right hand hole as I look at the box. Now we know what side our dog turns, we can start to shape the turn itself. I have broken this exercise down into sections and also used the opportunity to teach working at a distance. To avoid them jumping onto the box at a straight angle and then struggling to get off, I teach them to turn their body first. I have taken a cone or narrow bucket and in the direction of the turn used a tug to lure the dog around. To avoid them jumping instead of running, keep the toy low. Now he is happy with the task, I have moved further away and I am looking for him to drive back to the tuggy. I have also introduced a ball as a distraction but also to ensure he is more focused on the tuggy than the ball. Now the dog understands how to go around the cone, we now need to move it to the box. This is also a great way to get the dog used to the feel, movement and sound of the box using simple and fun games. Place the cone or bucket against the box and again lure the dog around. You want your dog to be getting all four feet onto the box and for them to be pushing off to get their toy. Keep the toy low to ensure your dog is moving its body and not just jumping round after the toy and not looking what it is doing. Once the dog is happy with this you can introduce more drive and speed. At this stage it is also good to allow the box to be triggered so that they can get used to the noise and don't associate the noise with the ball being there. Now the dog understands how to move its body we now want to introduce the jump onto the box. For this we use a baseboard. Initially I will lure the dog around me which helps to keep the body movement we have just trained and also helping to encourage the jump onto the box. Again the toy needs to be kept low. Now Fly understands what the board is, I am going to stand to the side and again encourage her onto the box for a quicker on and off movement. This should be all four feet on the box with a nice snappy move on and off also driving to the toy. When the dog is confident with the game, you can move further back and become more selective on what you reward. Every dog will be at a different stage and you will be rewarding different behaviours from four feet on the box, foot placement, height on the box, drive off, speed and no double hitting. The list goes on and for every dog it will be different.
Next we add in the ball. We are looking for the same style of turn that we had when the ball wasn't in the box. As you can see, Tallulah is hitting straight and struggling with her turn. To help her readjust, I have placed the bucket a few feet away for her to go around. This has got her turning again, and with a better placement on the box, she is able to catch better as well. Snoopy is very slow off the box, however I do know this is because he isn't racing and doesn't respond the same to close-up box work. Ziva had to catch the ball due to incorrect head placement. She has quickly adjusted and is now much cleaner off the box. As a continuation to the work, you are also working on the tug drive and want to encourage your dog to swap the ball for the tug. If your dog doesn't let the ball go, just take the ball from them and present the tug as the alternate toy to play with and make sure you have a really good game. Many dogs become fixated with the ball in the box, which can often lead to poor turns and lack of return speed. To help in this area, we do distraction work. In the following clips, I am working with Flight and Summer. I am asking them to watch me and work in the form of tricks. When they are completely focused on what is being asked of them and not at the ball in the box, only then are they allowed to go. At first, this can be hard work depending on your dog's level of fixation. However, they pick the game up quickly and soon realise that the ball in the box doesn't equal all the fun. Fun happens in the run back area with the handler. <laughs> 